we argued that the only reason people admire bodybuilders uh, who have built their body with muscle and not um, obese people who have built their body with eating huge amounts of food is because there's uh, prejudice against fat people. And so bodybuilding could benefit from including the non-competitive um, display of fat bodies alongside muscular ones. Absolutely unbelievable. But wait, let's rewind this a bit. Another recycled material uh, from uh, Hitler's Mein Kampf uh, with feminist rebadging mm. and a third declared that bodybuilding was fat exclusionary. Yes. Fat studies is um, one of the smaller and newer um, fields that is, is really quite worrying. And it puts pressure on research organisations and uh, medical authorities not to um, advise people to lose weight. Not quite the beginning of what you thought she was going to say, was it? I take that one quite personally because I've been trying to engage with fat studies as I, I don't precisely have thin privilege myself. And it's very difficult to talk about the health problems. And for people who are trying um, to lose weight or trying to get healthy, this kind of um, activism going on in the background, preventing them getting the right advice and the right medical treatment is, is I think, is going to be much more of a problem. This here is Helen Pluckrose, author and academic. She was part of the so-called so-called Square, which focused on publishing bogus research papers into grievance studies, a project which saw the group submitting a number of bogus academic papers to peer-reviewed journals in cultural, gender, queer and race study to see if they would get published. Dear Dr. Helen Wilson, <laughs> I have now closely considered the revisions of your manuscript, Dog Park, and will, and will recommend its publication in Gender, Place, and Culture. You have done very good work to address the issues your viewers raised and have clarified your arguments. Thank you for your contribution to Gender, Place, and Culture, and I hope to be seeing your manuscript in print. Yours truly, PhD Managing Editor, Gender, Place, and Culture. The author stated their goals as highlighting poor scholarship and eroding criteria in some academic fields, particularly those influenced by postmodern philosophy and critical theory. Previously, information was not very well democratised. Information sprouted like these trees and had to be navigated, understood, but only by a certain few who could afford the university education or had the means or ability to publish journal articles. Even though journal articles are free to everyone, in theory, to be able to open and do what they want, in theory, to be able to interpret, in theory, and have access to, in theory. But in reality, it's like a jungle. People have to be trained, very well trained, to be able to write a proper journal article. You need to have access to the journals, and they have a monopoly on that. Sometimes you need to be part of a university, and sometimes they are not open source. In practice, journal articles, scientific journal articles, are not very well open. People may not be understand, and this is the problem with the education system, but if you're not understanding on how to gain proper scientific information, especially around sports science, you're not going to then navigate the parts you need to navigate in order to find it. You're going to find someone else who will tell you they understand it, whether they do or not. They will tell you that it's scientific, whether it is or isn't. What the internet has done is democratised information giving, information education, allowing younger saplings to be able to rise up and be able to say that information, dictate that information without necessarily having the university education to do so. Or if they do have the university education, giving them a platform to be able to express those views they may not have necessarily done otherwise. These nice rows give us the information we need. Anyone can seek the information. Unlike the mixed jungle ahead of us. But that's not entirely accurate. Just as bramblish as the ground I'm walking on. Education given online has been described as the Wild East. Wild East referring to the dissolution of communism in Russia, where there was came a giant free-for-all, where anything and anything could go. The internet, to a certain degree, is like that. People giving out information who, quite frankly, should not do. Scammers, fakers, and certain organisations do enable that if it, even if it is accidentally key to burning fat and adding muscle for a guy is his metabolism 
science has a recognised problem in able to engage it with lay audiences. In other words, people who aren't necessarily going to read a journal article or even potentially be able to understand one. Most people don't even think about going to a journal article in order to get their scientific information, in order to get it accurate. Yes, trust elite. Scientists are often seen as elite by a few because of the way they act, the way they talk, and the way they see the situations around the world. A lot of people see reality as anecdotal, things that happen around them, whereas the scientists may look beyond that. Journal articles are the pinnacle of scientific information, actual, truthful information. However, they're not necessarily easy to read. Written in the third person, very boring, and lack humanity. Unfortunately, this has allowed room for scumbags who are gonna sell you snake oil, or maybe they're trying to sell you misinformation to sell a product. Or they're just highly misinformed, or they're trying to promote something for whatever reason that fits their political opinion. Just because someone holds themselves in good esteem, talks well, doesn't necessarily mean they know what they're actually talking about. Just because someone looks relatively good, doesn't mean they know how to train someone. Doesn't mean they know what they are talking about. That comes with experience and experiential knowledge. You need to act as your own filter. Not filtering out something just because it matches your own opinion. Yes, we all have our biases, but you need to be able to answer certain questions. Firstly, does this person actually know what they're talking about? Cross-references. Cross-reference them to other content creators and scientists. Yes, a content creator doesn't hold the same validation. I like to call this a spectrum or having a repertoire of information givers. Each information giver will have a different understanding and also provide different information from a different perspective. We live in a society and a time in human history where good scientific information available to all, but also we need greater need for those voices who are the correct and right voices telling the correct and right information regardless on what side of the political or sociological or science spectrum must be heard. It's up to you now that the gatekeepers have been destroyed gatekeepers being the newspapers and the academics to be your own very own gatekeeper.